Hi, my name is Ian Middleton, and I'll be doing my short paper response on why healthcare is not in America, why it should be in America, and you know who has healthcare in the world that we could maybe model ours off of. So segregation was a huge part of the country's foundation, and it is also a huge reason why we don't have healthcare in America as of right now. You know, so Janine Innerlandy with the New York Times published an article stating. Between the 1860s and the early 1900s, white legislators argued that free assistance of any kind would breed a dependence and that when it came to black infirmity, hard labor was a better solve than white medicine. So they didn't really, the white legislators, meaning the people that ran this country, didn't really want to take responsibility for the people that built this country. And, you know, it was more of like a fight for your own, do it yourself, walk it off type of mentality, start, keep working, and worry about health later type vibe. Janine then goes on to describe the Hilburton Act of 1946 and how it provided federal grants for hospital construction in communities of need, giving funding priority to rural areas, many of them being in the South, but also it ensured that states controlled the distribution of funds and could segregate the following hospitals being built. Right, so they tried to build more hospitals, they segregated them, and then they said, maybe we shouldn't give all the funds to this hospital, but more to this hospital. So they could literally just pick and choose where they wanted the money to go. Therefore, resulting in unequal, unequal and unfair treatment and care at the segregated hospitals that were kept away from whites. And this pretty much caused for America not to start with health care in the first place. So since we don't have it, we have to look to who does, right? Switzerland does have a great system of health care and thomas zeltner was switzerland's state secretary of health did a podcast with PB pbs and thomas in his podcast quotes one of the crucial innovations was separating health insurance from employment which has allowed the swiss to keep their health insurance during the pandemic while millions of americans are losing theirs while they lose their jobs so this makes complete sense right like switzerland has their health insurance and all their benefits separated from their jobs. While in America, we have our health insurance and all of our benefits completely tied to our job, right? So the job comes with all these things. So like in a pandemic or a hard time like that, when we lose our jobs and when jobs are pretty sparse, the health insurance and everyone that's got health care and all these benefits is also going to be sparse. So by Switzerland, separating the two, you can still have a health care and still have health insurance while not having a job. And this provides for the better of both worlds. And then he goes on to talk about how there are roughly 60 private companies selling plans for healthcare in Switzerland, right? But the government does take a firm stand in regulation. It, it mandates basic coverage that all plans must include, and the government sets the prices for the medications and procedures, like at the beginning of the year before anything even starts. So it's all under regulation, it's all mandated, and the companies really have no can't really like undercut you because there is a bottom line all they can do is help you even more and with 60 companies there's a broad range of selection and it's pretty much just like picking a candy bar they'll do the same thing how does norway do it so switzerland's got a good method but how does another method like norway how do they pay for their uh health insurance so authors robin osborne and george wharton and others with the Commonwealth Fund produced an article talking about how the Norway the Norway tax system pays for their health care. And what was found is two main funding sources are the general tax system and the household out of pocket payments, right? So the national and county taxes represent seventy seventy six percent of the health care funds. And contributions from state and payroll taxes represent 11%. Taxation rates are set in the national budget, so it's already predetermined at the beginning of the year how they were going to pay for it. And in 2018, the employee rate was 8.2% of their own pocket. And so another example of a country that has great health care is Norway, right? And how they distribute their funds is makes pretty good sense, even though it sounds kind of complicated. And Robin Osborne and George Wharton with the Commonwealth Fund published an article recently explaining how the tax system works and how their health insurance gets paid. 
So there's two main funding sources in Norway, right? The general tax system and the household out of pocket payments. So the national and the county funds or the county taxes, I'm sorry, represent 76% of all of healthcare's budget and contributions from state and payroll taxes represent 11%. Taxation rates are set in the national budget at the start of every year. And so they already have it predetermined at the start where the money is going to go and how the money is going to pay for the health insurance. And in 2018, the employee rate was 8.2% and the employer rate was varied between 5.1 to 14.1%, right? So all these percents add up to the entire budget of healthcare and they can pretty much be recycled year after year because it all goes through the same system. And so they can keep their healthcare rolling for years and years and years. And then the two main sources of income for these counties are 55% taxes on the residents of said county and then they get 45% of their budget from block grants from the government. And then out of this 45% of taxes and 45% of grants, 52% of all of that goes right back into healthcare and right back into social services to be recycled again for the next year. So they can keep their system going year after year while not entirely using all of the residents' money for their healthcare. And so how bad is our problem in America? Why do we need healthcare so bad? So the American Journal of Public Health published a survey representing 436,000 homeless people in our country. And of this survey, 73% of the respondents reported at least one unmet health need, including an inability to obtain needed or medical, medical or surgical care was 32%, right? So 32% needed medical or surgical care. Prescription medications, 36% needed, 21% needed mental health care, 41% needed eyeglass care, and 40, another 41% needed dental care. So all these people need all these different issues solved, and there's no real way to do it, right? And especially when they're placed out of home as a minor, or if they have vision impairment or a lack of health insurance to start with, none of these are going to get dealt with properly and with roughly... Two to three million Americans going through homelessness each year, especially with the spike during the pandemic. It makes it especially hard to get all these people in with the proper care without the proper funds, right? Because it's a pay for yourself type of country. And especially when homelessness is on the edge, you, I mean, healthcare can get pushed to the side when they're struggling for water, food or electricity or something like that. Like healthcare can get pushed to the side pretty easily and delayed which can start an even worse downward spiral, right? The city gets sicker and it keeps going on. So how do we get our own healthcare in America? Stephanie Deutsch with the Georgetown University Journal of Health Science published an article proposing health insurance options. And one of her options was a single payer system, right? So the government would pay for the expenses while private companies would distribute the services. Kind of like Switzerland does you'd have the companies with the government mandating mandating the bottom line care. One proposal suggested that national health insurance would cost American families an average of only 2% annual income and employers would pay 7% of their payroll to the government, an amount less than the percentage they already have to pay to cover their employees now. So this 2% and this 7% would go straight to the government and then that would get filed around and then hospital billing would be virtually eliminated right because it's seven percent from all employers and this two percent for all the employees would be would get distributed all and then sent out into individual hospitals so hospital billing would be virtually eliminated and instead individual hospitals would receive a lump sum from the federal government each year to cover operating expenses so it ought to be predetermined and they just have to send them out for the budget of the year. This way you wouldn't have to have like have a walk up payment service kind of thing and you could just go in and get your health care and you'd be right out. And it'd just be a tax almost, a 2% tax levy. So with a homeless problem like ours in America and not really a health care system to solve it, we need to start looking to other countries and other systems to implement our own way because it is going to have to happen eventually. And using these methods like Switzerland has where they separate health insurance from jobs and, you know, maybe using some of these pay systems that Norway has, like their tax systems, 
we can implement the same sort of system because we do ourselves have counties in Washington and in other places like that. So maybe it's possible. And I think it is definitely something that needs to be considered. And yeah.